Texas versus Kentucky continues. I have to do this in sections. This is a long video. Bear with me and study it. Your life depends on it. Versus Sarko goes on. We have um, new players on the board, but same game. We have new governor and new secretary. I don't play, but obviously they do. Some of them. Boy, I hope they're ready, because um, they'll get played, is it? Just like the rest of them. Read disability hearing about my SSI case. It will be February the 25th at 1.30 p.m. Okay, I am washed like a hawk. I am not stupid. When I go out to my truck, people peek out their window blinds and everything else. They know. Usually, I'm not even out past 12 p.m. I'm exhausted by about 11 and I'm in the house. So here they go. Place Henderson, Kentucky. I don't know anything about Henderson, Kentucky. I know how to drive through it and that's it. And that's a long way off. Then, they put my name in bold black letters three times. They're letting me know they're pissed off. So you have to learn to read between the lines. You can't read between the lines if you're medicated and distracted. And then it says, if I have any additional information. No, I've had a heart attack in um, April 2015. Dr. lied to me and said it wasn't a heart attack. So I don't go to doctors. And they're not trustworthy. Forget about them. Disability hearing. It says a disability hearing officer will be at another location. You and the disability hearing officer will be able to see and hear and speak to each other. And you will be able to you will be able to speak to anyone who comes with you to the hearing. This may include a representative if you have one. They put that in the in the parentheses kind of a sarcasm thing, I'm sure. Because they made sure that I couldn't get an attorney by lying on me in a future video. I mean a previous video. This is a friend or family member or someone I mean, a friend or family member, you may speak to with them too. Well, everybody I know is medicated or self-medicated, so they can't be trusted. And they can be played by the other people. So someone will be your, at your location to operate the equipment. Well, okay, here we go. Now, I have watched hearings at the Medicine of Disability Office. First of all, I watched them from outside, not the inside, just what was going, you know, coming and going. They have a little metal detector wand. Why do they need a metal detector wand when this is all by teleconferencing? There's nobody in the room but you and the monitors. So the metal detector isn't for guns, it's for your cell phone, so you can't record them. Oh, it gets better. Now, I've also seen in the Social Security office in Madisonville, it's a little room with the monitors. There was no, I didn't see any hearing officer in that room. All I saw was a security guard that's armed because it's a federal building. I didn't see a lot of things, but you got to pay attention. And he stayed outside. I watched as a guy and his attorney went in, put two chairs in there, and then they both came out and then the guy went in to speak. There was nobody there to operate the equipment that I saw. Now, this is, this is too fishy, okay? Because I got the 
her skills. Um, if you need a different place for the hearing, please call if it's scheduled more than 75 from your residence. Okay, I've had a heart attack, and I know I've had another one. I just didn't go to the doctor, so yeah, that's gonna that's gonna be stressful on me. I might have a heart attack while driving, and I'm not gonna put nobody else at risk. So while driving back, I'm not going. Later, you will hear where or you might have heard already heard in one of my other videos where I try to get some reasonable accommodation and do it by phone and unfortunately they don't usually do that. <laughs> okay. Payment for cost of travel. You can ask for payment. For you or your representative or any witnesses. You can ask, but that don't mean you don't get it. Okay. Now, it shows Please frame this that I to get it. this next paper, number two, where I requested an appeal. Tell the hearing assistant, tell, I've had an opportunity to tell the hearings officer why you are still disabled and present any additional evidence. Well, I hope that the hearings officer, no offense, has some intelligence enough to look at my medical records. Of course, some of the doctors have lied on them. So, I'm sure. And Social Security's behalf, the doctors are lying to people. If they've done it to me, you know they're doing it to you. Of course, they might have been put up to it. Now, I know I had a heart attack. That's going to be on the video. I went and got my own paperwork and had to go ask questions myself. But the doctor said it was my neck. They lie. They're mad because they're not in charge of me anymore. They're not going to kill me to death. So Social Security needs to kick some butt and get some and find out what these doctors are doing and why they're doing it and what's in the computers and why they can and so on and so forth. It is my personal opinion and I don't have news, radio and television and all that. I don't even talk about that stuff. America's under siege. It is. The new weapon of mass destruction, medication. Now, here we go. Uh, you can also choose not to travel to the hearing and allow us to make an impartial decision. Um, choosing not to have a hearing will not adversely affect the outcome of your decision or your case. Oh, I don't believe that. Now, I have recorded department DTS employees lying to me, being rude and condescending and lying on me. And I've never been an alcoholic. Yeah, that's another video. You gotta do all these videos in order, or you won't get it. And you need to get it because you're next. So, would I have to get into a partial decision? No. Forget about it. And neither were you. Whether you challenged your authority or not. Okay. They pick and choose who they're going after. You can believe that. The Disability Hearing Unit in the P.O. Box 1000, Frankfort, Kentucky. Well, a NSA operative, per se, and I want to laugh because she's like 60, 65, came by and let me know. She didn't mean to, but she did. That Frankfort's mad because of what I wrote on my Facebook. 
A.K. Whitfield, the truth about my stories and my notes. It's all true. So mm -hmm. they're mad because I told the truth. She says they don't like it when you tell on their butts. Now that's on another video. I say NSA operative because she says that the uh, person had come down to give her a test. NSA did. I guess it's a spy lie test. I don't know. It ain't none of me, so whatever. Now, asking for payments to travel costs. Some examples of unusual calls for ambulance. <laughs> Lying on me because, da da, I've been lying on before. 
that you see in our medical records. I will continue to, if I continue to meet other SSI eligibility requirements, I'll still get my money. Mm -hmm. Now this is a piece from the booklet to 2014 Social Security booklet. Now here it says the hearing is informal, but we record it. You may ask for a copy of the hearing recording. Okay. You may ask. Now this is from their own Social Security booklet. Now hold on, it gets better. This is what I got in the mail. She tells you what the video hearing is. So she and other hearing participants. So who are these other hearing participants? I expect it's just a judge. That's what the paperwork says. In the book. No. It says judge. Other participants. The hearing officer remains in his or her office. A technician is there to make sure the equipment works smoothly. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Now, now, the hearing officer can speak with you or anyone that comes with you. Here we go. We do not videotape hearings, nor do we make audio recordings. Do not believe that. It is a federal building. Walmart has high technology. You don't think the federal building wouldn't have? Flower shops audio and video record. Okay, that's all that's supposed to be by law. It's posted that you're being audio and video recorded, but they don't because they do what they want to do. So, you know, this is suspicion within itself. Now, the prior paper about the pills, about the, uh, bear with me, excuse me, from the, uh, 2014 booklet. This is a hearing. is informal, but we record it. Now this says we don't. Well, there's two possibilities, uh, and I, I've had a lot of things happen in my life, and I won't go into detail. It's some of it's on Facebook. Some of it you know about. Some of it you don't. But there's two outcomes. For me going to a federal building, being in the room or around two total strangers that are their employees, which is the hearings officer, which I'm sure he's happy about me recording his co-workers, and the tech guy. So... I'm going to be in a room where the monsters can accidentally go off or whatever with two total strangers, which I do not trust no farther than I can throw a Ferrari. Okay? Now, in my past, I got beat up by six cops. Even when I was cuffed and down, I got beat up. And you know what they told? I fell down. Okay. My black eye and bust his lip and other things. She fell down. They didn't have cop cams back then. We tried to arrest her. Now that was six of their words against mine. Okay. Yeah, that actually happened. Where, when, how, that don't matter. But 
That's one experience. Now, I'm going to be in a room with two total strangers that you plug or unplug us. Yeah, you're getting, you're getting that. Okay. Now, that's one scenario that is possible. Here's a second scenario. Also, they could beat me up and say I had a seizure and call an ambulance and put me in the hospital. Yeah. They can say I've done something to them or said something to them. They can say I threatened them. Oh, man, that's a felony. You know? They're federal, they're federal people or state. And I don't have a witness. It's not videotaped. It's not recorded or recorded. And of course, they have a wand to search me for a cell phone, so I can't record it. So there's two scenarios there that I'm not going to make a chance on. Now, there's another possible scenario. The judge or whoever can say I'm incompetent and have me locked up. Well, I know I'm not incompetent because I pay my bills and I take a bath. So, see, there's all kinds of scenarios that you don't think about because you're medicated. They help. They would, uh, if I still find me not eligible, no matter, you know, what I do. Now, one thing, a person like me, and you're probably a person like me, you just don't know it yet, you don't walk into an ambush. You have senses, unless you're medicated or self-medicated, and well, you know the rest of that. This is a total ambush, one way or the other. Alright, well, I'm exhausted. I'm going to have to finish recording this in a little while. Okay, folks, bear with me. I'm doing this piece of time. I'm a little person. Now, let's go back to the denial letter. Do you, that came from Todd, the first one. It says that I was disabled prior because of depression. Well, in a prior video, Todd says it was alcohol and depression. If you will go back and look at my medical and my mental records on video, there's no depression or alcohol. Okay. Due to lack of medical evidence in your files, I was scheduled for two special exams. Yeah, I'm sure they were. Now, on a prior video, I show that there's some confusion here because, no, I was sick one and the other one was canceled. I don't remember the other one. I might have had a heart attack didn't know it. Who knows? Well, I say confusion, but I, I believe they just lied on me. But, DDS, Frankfurt, based located in London, Kentucky, East Kentucky, based on evidence in your file. <coughs> Excuse me. Your file does not contain evidence necessary to show that your conditions are considered disabling. Well, people, if you look about you, there are people with handicapped stickers working, disabling stickers. They're going to bingo, they're going to ball games, they're going to church, they're going to Walmart. They're going to movies. They're going to but YMCA. They're going dancing. Okay. okay. So now it says you may have to pay back some or all of this money if I'm found not disabled. Well, it's, I added it up, and if I'm found uh, not disabled, I believe I owe five or six thousand dollars back that I can't pay because I can't work because I'm disabled. Let me talk about you for a minute. If you've worked all your life and you have savings and everything and bonds and stocks and you'll have to pay that back. So they don't give you no leeway to have anything to live on. So you see, it's set up and sabotage from the get-go. Now you need to go and get the current Social Security books and read through it, if they have it. When I went in 2014 and asked for a 2015 book, 
they gave me a 2014 bro. Went in 2015. Yeah. take a break before you finish studying and analyzing this video because it's a long video. Man, how we make the decisions I was disabled before. The claim was dated 2007. Well, I was working at Walmart at that time. I was working there until 10 something in 2007. Now, 8-22-2007 must have been when I injured my back again, uh, lifting out some bottled water. It was a case of water. I had to move over to get it to scan, to, or I could get to the barcode to scan it. The water. And then it shows all the hospitals I've been to. Don't go there. Don't go to any these places. Uh, Foundation supports best in Nashville, Kentucky. Even a disability determination zone on the video. People go in, they come out worse than they were. It's absolutely true. Better will mental health. Well, as I showed in a prior video, uh, first of all, they record everything you say, and then someone takes a recording and puts it into words and they get to hear all your information and they may, may, they may mess up. Anyway, they lie. Or they oh, may mess up. Okay, that's it. They lie. Regional Medical Center, you don't want to go there either. That's now. That's on a previous recording where I showed the doctors hurt me on purpose. That's now Baptist Health. Torbert Clinic is not there. It's now Baptist Health. Trouble Clinic doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. So, there you have it. And it says this information showed that I was diagnosed with depression. Well, I was conned by General Mental Health because that's what they do. They ask you about your past and you tell them about your painful past and you cry and they say, okay, you're depressed, you need pills. No. Just like when you go to a movie and you see a sad part, if you're still human, uh -huh, you cry. If you go to a movie and you see a funny part, guess what? You laugh. They play you. Anyway, they said, and they lie, I was diagnosed with depression and put me on pills. Well, with the pills, guess what? I was depressed. And more. Now, since you can look at your file before the meeting, I, I'm not littering all on my fancy words and all this and all that. I had help doing this. Anyway, you can bring people to say why you're still disabled. Well, I tried to give some information to Yolanda. She got smart and condescending. Well, that don't mean you're disabled. So, it is on YouTube on another video if you have seen it. Like I said before, you have to do all of them in order to get the, the picture. Now at this meeting, you can ask people questions. All right. Okay. If you want, I'll be exhausted. I'm not going to be in any condition if I went to this meeting. Anyway. Help with your appeal. They sabotage that. I explained that prior to this. You can get help from a lawyer or free legal services if you qualify. I don't qualify because I was sabotaged. Of course, they have to be used out. They have to also approve your fee. If your help gets worse and you feel you're disabled again, please get in touch with us. You may be able to receive benefits. What this means, really, is if you take pills and go to doctors and let them mess you up worse, because that's what they do. This is We are human experimentations. That's the only way I can look at it. They experiment on us. They practice on us. The conspiracy bigger than... Uh, I, don't, I can't even go there. Now, just for a little for refresher course,
university, past medical history and surgeries. Here it is. And then more of this stuff. Found dis the aortic valve disorders because a doctor said that the hypothyroidism that I say they lied to me and said I had if I took the medicine because I was three more students like you. Uh, caused it. And then on down here, on down here. Now, maintenance, health, immunizations. I don't know what some of this is, and I don't know how I got conned into taking them, but some of these are from when I was just born. Poliovirus vaccine. I've got to look at it, but it's polio or crippling disease, and they put the virus in me. And my knees were caving in. Well, the doctor done that, but they were. I had problems before he made them worse. And then you've got a med list of everything you are taking here. Oh, yeah, they really want you to take all this stuff so you will self terminate. Family history. Mother, alcoholism. Now, my parents both smoked and drank and so on. I do not. It's a lie that is genetic. And they started all that after my dad came back from the military. He served uh, Korea. And my mama started it after she turned 30. So when you were away for your family history, Tell them you don't have one. Or just be smart and don't go in. Because if you tell them it was your heart or they had cancer or this or that and the other, guess what? They're going to find it in you and they're going to make you believe you've got it because your parents had it. Don't believe it. Now, a social history, never smoke. Alcohol use, non drinkers. How God and how it got into my records that I'm an alcoholic because it was put there or they lied. Now, I drank occasionally back in the day, like everybody else. Duh. You don't think your social security records can be hacked or changed by someone? You better think again. Drug misuse, no reported history. Now, federal mental health said I had that I abused floor tabs. No, I didn't. In 2001, I was set up by some people and sold five floor tabs and sold five Tylenol threes. Now, the only reason that occurred is because. The federal mental health had me medicated. The full story on that and how I got out of that situation and didn't become a narc is on Facebook in my notes. On my Facebook in my notes. And I was distracted by TV. That's the only way they got me. It's a setup. You have to be on guard. Now, when I went back to the National Social Security, some really nice folks, they helped me a whole lot, um, they said, uh, this is why I requested the disability cessation. Excuse me, folks, I'm not literate on all these fancy words, but I told them I have a heart and lung condition, difficulty breathing, walking, fatigue, medicine does not help, nor treatment. And then we sent, uh, I sent a whole bunch of other information with him. A real nice informative guy. Now, I asked him to make copies and give me back my originals, and the papers that I did sign there at the Social Security office, I made sure I got copies of those. Get copies of everything you bring in and everything you sign. And I had the bottom that says, give 
to find a friend or relative that we can contact other than your doctors who knows about your illness, injuries, conditions, and so on and so forth. Well, TDS did not call any of the ones I gave them. And in another video, they refused more information than I had. And then they said before we can further action can be determined by your medical eligibility under Social Security Act. They need a daily living form. Well, I don't have parties and how I live day by day does not have anything to do with how I can work. Can I stand up and do an eight hour job? No. But a lot of people that are on disability and taking the pills, whether it be mental or physical or both, they're out here selling drugs, they're out here prostituting, they're out here stealing, they're out here partying in the streets. Yeah. You get the picture. Even the National Housing Authority and National Kentucky's own manager, Connie Reynolds, said they know that I can't even do eight hours community service. I'm so I'm exempt. But Yolanda, which is in another video, said, well, that don't mean you're disabled. But they ask you for it. Anyone give names to someone who knows, but they don't call them because they've already made up their mind. Then they try this threatening thing for you to do so. We'll determine everything based on evidence in your file. If we do not receive a letter within 14 days of the state, we must assume you no longer wish to continue the development of your claim. 14 days. Well, what if I'm down for two weeks? Because that has happened. Now, you know, this has happened to me. You know, I'm done for. But you're next. Believe that. Be ready. You better do something while you are able to do something. And when I say do something, I mean uh, start saving you money, start eliminating your assets, if you have any, uh, start taking better care of yourself, get off meds. Off the TV. You cannot use your skills or your brain if you're medicated, self-medicated, or distracted. There are unnecessary things in your life. And that's my spiritual advice. Get it out. This is not a joke. It's about your life and your soul. Now, the federal mental health evaluation, psychiatric evaluation, okay, they lie, they make up their own rules. Who wrote the book? Who knows? Now, I've done went through this on another video, step by step. But a lot of this is garbage. And look at all this medication they wanted me on. And they lied. It wasn't doing well in 2010. I ended up in two mental hospitals, two different occasions, because of the medications and drama was going on. Now, if I had not been, if I had not been medicated, I would have handled the drama. But I was medicated, so I could not handle the drama. So the drama handled me. Are you kidding this? Okay. Now, 2011, I wasn't that medicated. The drama came after me, and I keep drama's butt, per se. That's on Facebook, in my notes. It's all true. Uh, A.K. Whitfield. The making of an anti-bully person. You see, if you're medicated, you won't stand up for yourself and you won't fight drama back. That's why you're medicated. Now, I consider drama evil. There are ethers. There's evil in the world. You better get with the program. You can't see it. You can't fight it when you're medicated. Some of you out there have some very special skills, and they know about it, and that's partially why you're medicated. They want you medicated or dead. I don't want 
reason. So, don't go to the neural mental health. That is not my medical advice. That's illegal. That is my spiritual advice. And right now, we are in some strange times, and you better get with the program. Now, on here, I said I had discontinued a whole lot of it. I said because of my weight gain, it was really because I knew better. Now, at that time, you know, this is a reasonable question. Reasonable, excuse me, reasonable. Oh, I'm getting tired of it. I'm going to take a break. There is a questionable history of the thyroid disorder. Questionable. Now, they didn't believe it, but they let me take it anyway. Are you understanding this? They're not your friends or your buddies. Understand this. You're a paycheck. Past history. 30 years ago, this, 20 years ago, that. Okay? That's true. But I said that probably 20 years ago. So, yeah. There's no time on this. No dates. And that is um, some documented history of wars of abuse in the past. That's a lie. Um, records of incarceration. Secondary to trafficking and pain pills. Now, if I was abusing pain pills, why would I traffic in them? I would keep them for myself. I wasn't uh, incarcerated. I was in jail a few days. And then there's a whole bunch of other misinformed stuff in here. I, I explain to you detail by detail on another video. So you see, when you have a general mental health, they record one thing, but they may say another, and you can't prove it because you're not recording them. So, handle your own problems. Get off medication. That's my spiritual advice. Handle your own problems, and don't get set up. Medication will not save your life. Doctors are not in control of saving your life. They want to be. They try to be. Now, if you're in a car wreck and your arm gets cut off, yeah, they can throw it back on, but they didn't save your life. You're still alive because God saved your life. Get with the program. Now, these are actual diagnoses. Bipolar a psychotic disorder. In another video, a doctor states that thyroid medicine causes psychosis. People, your medicine is making you worse. Your medications, your over-the-counter is making you worse. That is my spiritual advice. Yeah, when you do start coming off of it, and if you do it, I advise you to do it slowly. That's my spiritual advice. And you will feel rough a while. You might not be able to go play bingo, and you might not be able to go do this and go do that. But you will save your soul and your life. Now, and then it says, uh, I've got all kinds of impaired social personality disorder. Um, history of... Now, I explain all this in detail on my other video. It says, um, what does your me mental records really say? And are they true? Head injury. Yeah, you did. And access, GAF, whatever that means. But you know what? It don't say any alcoholism, any paranoia, no depression. No anger, no rage, no violence by me. Now, I have been attacked by strangers, and of course, I have had um, some uh, significant abuse, both emotional, physical abuse, and verbal. And of course, I've been attacked by strangers. That really happens. Now, 
That's the truth. I'll confirm that later on. It does happen. Now down here, it, treatment recommendations, whatever. If you don't do it, you don't get your check. So, yeah. Documentation transcribed by Massville Pharmacy. Madisonville, I'm sorry, Madisonville transcription. Correction on that. This means that Amanda, whatever, Waddle, the staff, and all the other people that talk to you record what you say. They don't tell you, but they record it. Then it gets turned over to Madisonville transcriptions. And they type it out. So, not only do you and your therapist hear what you have to say about your problems, strangers hear about it. Because they have to hear about it in order to type it when they lie on you with the program. And or would they get your spot confused with somebody else's? Yeah, there's all kinds of scenarios on that one. So a real high probability that your records can't be changed correctly. That's all on the other video that I put, a prior one that said, yeah, you get the, you get the main stuff on that. Like I said, you got to do all of them or you won't get the big picture. Now, when you, if you ever, you know, grow a backbone and get some cuts, Go to your medical records. You will see this encounter medications. As long as you're taking and killing yourself, you get a check. Look at all this taking, 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 discontinue, taking, taking, taking. And I've got some uh, other information. There are people that's worked all their lives and they're taking 20 medications and they still can't get their disability. It's taken up to five years. Do you know why? Well, I have a good theory on that. They know you're taking the medications, and they expect you to die before you're approved. That way, they don't have to pay you any money, and they get to keep the money you made. Get with the program. Well, trust me, down. I just didn't tell them when I stopped taking it and started throwing it all in the garbage. I just kept getting them refilled, and now it's not fraud, it's self-preservation. The stuff is still wrong with me, that was wrong with me. It wasn't working. I tossed it. Or it was making me worse. You need to know, Tylenol, ibuprofen, and all that other stuff that's over the counter is hurting you too. And that's just a fact. Read the label. You build up your own pain tolerance. Of course, as I prove in prior videos, you have to excuse me, I'm doing this in sections and using the pause button. Uh, your medications that you are conned into taking are causing your problems, extra problems that you don't need. Now, when I was going to a pain clinic, that's my spiritual advice. I was given a disability handicap parking. Ooh, I am so special because I am self-terminating on medications. I was even encouraged to get it when I told her that I had some left. But it doesn't say that I'm disabled. But wait a minute, it does say it's just partly disabled. She asked me if I wanted a license plate, and I told her no, because I was trying not to be disabled. I was doing some exercises and stuff, which I found out later was causing more problems. And it even warned me in the Bible, after I got I medicated and I read it again, that exercise profited very little. You see, now when I was going to the wide exercising, I was medicated, so I thought I was superwoman. I have seen people 
older people about 90 working out looking like Superman because they're medicated and hurting themselves worse. But they don't realize it because they feel good on the medicine. Medicine will make you feel good. Sometimes. Some, some of it will. But it's killing you. And if you see them, you go get you a rat trap. Okay? I've seen one out here on the street. It's, it's pretty and white, shaped really nice. But when the rats go in, they don't come out. But it looks good. People, your body is a muscle. Muscles wear out. And that's just a fact. Now, Baptist Health, which I revoked the consent form, says, I understand the practice of medicine is not an exact science. That diagnosis and treatment involve risks of injury or even death. Now, they're telling you, okay? Now, I had went to the ER twice for the same thing. I don't have herpes. Never had herpes. Didn't do any good. Because it was what they said at the ER. See, that's why I won't go to ER. Because they pump you full of stuff. It's done the damage to your body. and cause you more problems. And they don't fix the problem. I went to the ER twice for this. One problem. I was pumped full of stuff, IV, and then I was gay stuff twice. Did not fix the problem, but caused more problems. And then I went to Mr. Wobb and she gave me something that fixed it. Go see my no refills back. Bear with me, people. I'm, I'm, I'm sleeping on borrowed time. Now, when I went to an ER, they ask you, you know, questions. And it says right here, no alcohol use or drug use. Now, you know, if you go to an ER with a broken arm, or you go to an ER for uh, the flu, they still ask you if you're harmed to anybody. Why do they do that? The harm assessment was performed, and I answered no to all this recently. Felt down, depressed, or hopeless. Okay, everybody feels down, depressed, and hopeless sometimes. So, when you go to an ER, they're fixing to set you up. Have you ever had thoughts, or have you recently had thoughts about blah, 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 blah? Don't go. If you're medicated or in pain, they can play you. When they play you, you're gone. Now, reflect back. 
to what I showed you about going to this disability determination hearing in Henderson at 1.30 p.m., which I would be exhausted. And I would be in a room with two strange men. Now, let's go up here. In 2012, 5-18-2012, I went to an ER because I was arrived by police. I was taken by police. Now, after I reviewed all my medical records, I had a too high a dose of Synthroid. And I had a migraine. Psychotic. A doctor states that. And I had a migraine. Now, even though I had no suicidal thoughts or self-injury or blah, 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 I went to jail. And then I went to a mental hospital. Now, let's go down here. I went to jail and I asked for a roll or toilet paper and they told me I was going to Western State. Now, let's look at the dates on this. This hearing for Western State was dated May the 10th, 2012. Okay, let's go back up. The incident happened May the 18th, 2012. So, the hearing was dated before, signed and dated, before the incident. Are you keeping up? Yeah. Now here is just some um, references, personal references. Now, the first one is from Federal Mental Health, from David Brown, that I saw for about 20 years. Why I went there, I don't, I don't recall. Anyway, he says, um, I was convicted of a uh, felony drug charge. Whitfield's comprehension of this act was minimal. It was minimal because I was medicated. Yeah. And then it goes down here and he plays me, you know. I'm not gonna, I wasn't going to get in the pill. It was a waste of my time. It appears Mrs. Whitfield has been unduly punished as a consequence of her actions. I'm asking that you consider Mrs. Whitfield's law-abiding life quality of character and desire to fit in. Uh, no. I don't desire to fit in with your equilibrium society. I'm not taking pills of self-destruction like the rest of you. And grant her a pardon for a crime which had minimum damages on society and has impaired, severely impaired no, the medication severely impaired me. Do you understand that these people at Pinnacle Mental Health and all your doctors and all your nurses are medicated on something? To survive on limited resources. I am grateful for your attention to this matter and rely on your mercy and sense of fair justice to resolve this issue. The part never happened. There's your sign. But if you're a murderer of a family, you can get a pardon. Now, here's a person in 2008, was what I believe I met him. He was a neighbor. Uh, he tells me he was a good neighbor, became a good friend, was a good mother. Okay. And he also says, I expect, he says, I am a very trustworthy person of character. Okay. Now, down here, lady that it's not there anymore. It says, hey, I have always complied to the rules of the food bank. Yeah, I complied 
the rules. It's a reasonable and don't change every minute. And then down here, I went to uh, vocational rehab, I believe it was 2010, to try to find a job. At that time, I felt I could do something, anything, at that time. And uh, my case worker and I hunted diligently and nobody would hire me. Imagine that. Now it says I was a client for job placement and became a good friend. Well, like I said, vocational rehab was a waste of my time. It says I'm a very peaceful person and I like peace and quiet. Keeps to her keeps her home clean and neat. Keeps to herself and does not cause trouble. No, I do not cause trouble. Now here is um, when I was living at Cross Creek Apartments and I was attacked. Well, I was, yeah, about three, three strange big old women came after me and only one threw the punch and it didn't turn out well for her. But here's the story. It was self-defense. Freeze frame it to get it all. So you see, then there's part of her signature and her phone number. Now I found out later the girl that attacked me was kin to an ex sheriff that was high on the food chain, and he was upset because she got her butt whooped. I told you, bullies defend bullies. So I believe that's why the DEA set me up. Of course, I was medicated. A little bit, not much. But still, anything. That is true, too. I have more references, but not enough juice to do it. Now I want to show you something about housing sabotage. I went to uh, some places to try to, you know, I was going to move when I was able to move, and uh, they wouldn't rent to me, and they gave me why they wouldn't rent to me. Boy, was I shocked. Elk Creek Manor. In December 2007, the manager of Elk Creek Manor wrote me a very nice reference letter. We've never expected any police calls or disturbances. I'm a very good tenant, pays my rent on time, takes good care of her home. Okay, I lived there over five years. Now, when this reference came by, previous landlord verification form, I was totally shocked. They even got the name wrong on it. I told them it was Elk Creek. They got Cross Creek Manor. But anyway, this is housing lies. This is people, good people being set up so they can't rent. Now down here, it says, was applicant current on the rent? It says no. Well, when I got disabled and injured myself in 2007, it was rent. It was current. I told Tracy, a very nice lady, very fair lady, that uh, I was going to have to move because I couldn't pay the rent. So I was current at that time. Now, um, is there a balance due? It says well over five hundred. File is stored where they need to unfile it. Um, has he or she ever been late? That's blank. It says, have you ever begun eviction proceedings? Yes, that is a lie. And I've got 
documentation from witnesses. And then down here, it says carrying for the unit. It says, did I keep the unit clean? No. They lied. Was there any damage to the unit? It says the house was destroyed. That's a lie. Now hold on now. Will, will or did you keep any security deposit? It said no. Well, that don't make no sense. If if the house was destroyed and I owed over five hundred dollars and I was behind in my rent, of course they would keep the security deposit. They're medicated and they're lying. Now I went when I went back to this place. This place to try to get this corrected. They told me the attorney that wrote this up or whatever, you know, documented all the stuff that's in the file, died. Imagine that. Because God don't like liars. He sure don't. Now, when I did move, I left a dryer, two bags of trash, a bed, and a sofa. The house was not destroyed. I do owe them back rent for two months or so and for cleaning up what I left behind. The house was not destroyed. This is intentional sabotage. I suggest if you anybody out there rents from um, Elk Creek I would suggest that you uh, take pictures before you move into any Elk Creek properties and take pictures before you move out of any Elk Creek properties. The other housing sabotage is when I was set up for that drug felony because they wanted me out of Cross Creek. You don't want to go there either and live there. And then, um, of course, that uh, drug felony set me up to where I couldn't get Federal housing. It was by the grace of God that I got where I'm at. Imagine that. Now, back to Elk Creek. When I tried to get all that corrected, I was told I needed to get an attorney. Well, if I can afford an attorney, yeah. See, they lie. Because I, I couldn't pay it. And I handed her the key. And I told her that I left some bags behind and some furniture. I wasn't evicted. So they lie. I've never been evicted. So this lie from Elk Creek Manor prevented me from moving to another place. Intentional sabotage. It's real. It's true. It's in what's left of America. Now, I found this came from Will, Will Care Insurance. Of course, I've mailed my insurance card back and told them I won't be needing it because I'll never go to a doctor again. But at each checkup, it tells you if your physician may examine you unclothed and covered. Uh, that won't happen, and you better not let it happen either alone nowadays, they want your health history and behavioral health assessment and screening, suspicions, hearing, they, look at this, heart disease assessment, medication review with your PCP. So they can say you have it. Also bring vitamins and supplements to your appointment. Don't take that stuff. You don't know what's really in them. Eat food. That's my spiritual advice. Catch up on any shots you briefly missed. I don't think so. Are you understanding this? Now, down here, our records show that you don't take shots, don't, because you don't know what's in them, and that's my spiritual advice. You may not have had blah, 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 blah. Please call and make an appointment. Forget the word please. Please is no longer the magic word. Please is now a con word. Our records show you may not have had blah, 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 blah. You see, when you don't get your medication and you don't go to a doctor, as I said, 
your record show. Your red flag. It is your body. Do not let them brainwash you into going and having stuff done to you. You are, in fact, a medical experiment. And you have the right to say no, or at least you did. Now, trap. When you're medicated, self-medicated, you are under the influence. That is just a fact. You can be controlled, persuaded to say and do what you wouldn't if you were sober-minded. You may say yes to the mark. If some of you don't believe it, you better get with the program. And say, and that's why you're really medicated. You're medicated to keep you under the under control. To kill you. Equilibrium. Watch that movie. Us. And the SSA, I believe, is downsizing to no people at all. And the food stamp office. Everything is getting automated and computerized. I also believe your social security number will soon be Check your food stamps, your credit card, your rent, your life, and your soul will be on this barcode. Oh, I love this pause button on this because I'm getting choked up here. Now, NSA, all right, don't even let me go there. In the New World Order, and if it's backwards, on. The mark of the beast, the mark code, they will own you. And this is in the Holy Bible. So this is 666 or 696 in any order. In the Bible it says 6, 3 score 6. 3 score is 3 times 3. So, yeah, I know what you've been taught. But you've been taught medicated. Now, when I was born, I was shot up with stuff I had no, no choice over. I was medicated until I was 16. And then I didn't, I didn't take it all the time. I won't give you the logistics of it, but I am my own person. And I will continue to be my own person until there's no life left. And you can watch TV and be medicated and self-medicated and everything. My area is to inform you what's going on. Your area is to make your own choices. You see, if you know about evil and stuff wrong and stuff being done to innocent folks, and you do not speak out that makes you just as evil I'm speaking out because I'm not medicated I am not equilibrium I'm not evil I will do more videos as I can and as the information flows I want to talk about the mark of the beast, as it is in the Bible. I got news for you. I've heard uh, people talk about aliens in the grocery store, and they're not talking about illegal aliens either. I got news for you. Antichrists are aliens. Don't fall down. It's true. You don't believe it because you can't see it because you're medicated. You cannot see them. You cannot hear them. Because you're medicated or self-medicated. And when you do, you think you're crazy. Okay. They want you medicated. They want you locked up. Because if you knew, you would fight back. And that's the point. One of the other biggest lies that there is, is that the devil and God don't exist and demons don't exist. That's a lie. So, 
in conclusion, it's my area to inform you. It's your area to take action. Why are you here? You are here to fight the Antichrist. It's that simple.